I must say we are extremely, extremely happy um, that uh, Nadezhda Cecinovic responded to our invitation. She is a legend um, and very respected. She, she is a professor emeritus at the faculty of Zagreb, head of department, um, uh, sorry, chair for the aesthetics, no? Her, uh, head of aesthetics department. Used to. Yeah. Also co-founder of the Center for Women's Studies in Zagreb and also former president of PEN Croatia. Um, she also was um, joining Praxis School at the end, because she was young, that young at that time. Um, so she was at the Kurtula, um Conference, the famous Kurtula Conference, and also participated one article in Prax Praxis Magazine. She was invited to the faculty by Praxis members, Danko Gorlic, Kajo Petrovic, Milan Kangerga, all names that we heard. She was also professor, visiting professor at Jan van Eyck from 95 till 2000. And just me, let me just list some of her books. An Intelligent Woman's Guide to World Literature from 2007. Why Read Philosophers 2010 on Love. Books and Talking Things, 2012. Culture and Civilization, 2012. An Introduction to the Philosophy of Literature from 2017. She will be speaking, like drawing on Adorno. Um, the title of her talk is Minimum of Morality. So please. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I, I am really, really embarrassed by this built up. It comes from my age, I think. That's <laughs> No, I was very glad to get the inv invitation, and uh, I, uh, on hearing the topic, um, I immediately thought about Adorno and Minima Moralia. It was quite inevitable. You know, uh, that's my old example <laughs> of Minima Moralia, and uh, the two sentences uh, of such important in my later work, I suppose, are those... Uh, famous ones about there can't be any proper, truthful, uh, decent life in, in the false. Uh, in German it's, of course, more elegant. Es gibt kein richtiges Leben im Falschen. But the other sentence is as well very important. It's about uh, the almost insolvable uh, task to uh, not be discouraged by the power of others and by one's own lack of power. And not to allow to do it, sich dumm machen zu lassen in German, it's, uh, well, it's about not, not allowing oneself to get stupid, but of course it's, um, again, not quite translatable. That was the first idea. Uh, but uh, then I realized that uh, I don't really know where I'm going, uh, and I'm really not going to read all this said, because uh, I had some difficulties uh, in uh, deciding what I want to do. It's going to be, I hope not quite, a sort of memoir or at least a, a, a modest contribution to a history of ideas. I don't think I got to any kind of uh, proper analysis. Uh, but what I want to do is make a very simple framework and uh, if I uh, manage uh, to repeat or to refer to some of the uh, topics already discussed here. Uh, what was the, my, well, me the memoir kind comes now, <laughs> what was the first uh, question one uh, poses oneself when uh, has some vague idea about studying or not studying philosophy or related topics? But not only that, but what does one do with one's uh, own uh, life? It's um, the basic question, how to, how, how to live one's life. And uh, uh, to be a little more specific, uh, there's the, the so-called 
circumstances uh, in a modern age. That is the one difficulty that is uh, that stems from the fact that um, in modernity you are supposed to be uh, autonomous, to be uh, uh, responsible uh, for all your own way in the world. You're not bound to a traditional role, a traditional uh, thesis. But then obviously, and there, there comes the trouble we are discussing here, you have no influence of, uh, over the circumstances of your own life. And the other uh, presupposition that uh, is a little more specific, and uh, again, not without uh, some kind of inner paradoxical twist, is uh, that comes from, I uh, was more or less born in a, a tradition where uh, changing the world was mandatory. I mean, it's obvious you had to change something. And uh, it works out like that, that we are supposed to make sacrifices for something deemed to be inevitable. That's a, that's a quite difficult position to maintain, that you are supposed to uh, act, uh, but in a context of uh, some kind of uh, impersonal force, if something uh, that you, you are supposed to be an agent, uh, to a subject of change, but the forces were somehow really described, or, or, or at least um, they were so impersonal, or if not impersonal, in a, in a way that um, excluded in a sort of uh, simplified Marxist reading of uh, the Hegelian tradition that excluded any kind of contingency. It was supposed to be, to, there, was, there was a solution was already there. It's going to come. There is all kinds of details. Uh, I'm not going to uh, into here the, the, the very uh, awkward notion of a so-called optimistic tragedy. Because you know, of course, if you have the proper tools to change the world, there are no proper tragedies left. There are only optimistic ones. <laughs> so if the hero of a tragedy in a socialist context uh, doesn't survive, it's still an optimistic tragedy because. Um, he does it because he has to do it. So, well, uh, but uh, to be a little more specific, we have mentioned it, uh, and uh, even from the very beginning, in the formal introductory uh, speeches of the dean uh, of the faculty for arts, that uh, the very topic of uh, our the conference, the uh, alienations, was a sort of everyday word. We have now went on and on, and we are now uh, much more, uh, there's all kinds of specific specificity developed about the, uh, both the political and the surface level and the more complicated level of it, but still, uh, uh, in the middle of the 60s or something like that, the, the, they are, the, you spoke about uh, alienation uh, like something that is uh, Oh, here present, but uh, uh, not something that is a real problem, because uh, of course the, the, there's the, the best and the exploitation and all kinds of, of uh, things like that, but there is already a solution. You just have to go on and uh, uh, the, well, you had uh, a certain degree, I did have a certain degree of um, I believe that the, the connection between the, uh, our experiments of uh, self-management and developing a different type, or it is trying to develop a, a, a other different type of uh, economy, are going in some kind of direct direction. Uh, of course, it's uh, it. Uh, wasn't quite easy to uh, uh, be the, the naive approach uh, was of course uh, slightly modified by the way uh, it uh, you had to do it in a, uh, if you go and went as I did uh, go on, on to study philosophy first in Slovenia and then uh, you you had a, you were on the there was a crossroads of uh, 
number of options he were or, or he already mentioned there was the uh, school uh, discussed here the praxis variety a school uh, where I it's it's not really I, the members and the, the and I'm I'm thankful that I was accepted uh, and uh, spent my whole professional life in a kind of uh, first with the praxis uh, praxis thinkers and uh, and then later on the department they found it and this kind of tradition but I I'm not quite sure that I would like here to 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 present myself as a proponent of this kind of humanistic thoughts. Uh, were, the other options uh, were, of course, um, there was Heidegger. Heidegger is a Slovene variety without Marxism, and Heidegger with the, in the Croatian variety with Marxism. And there again is the and friend, as already mentioned here, I have it here, but I'm not going to repeat, which always uh, uh, discussed matters about uh, the way uh, even Heidegger introduced and framed that is alienation in the letter of um, humanism. And there was, uh, there were, of course, um, already uh, structuralism and then uh, Althusser in a specific kind of thing. Uh, that is uh, the first uh, a very severe uh, variety of reading Marx. But then in uh, 1967, we were suddenly introduced to not one, but three books of Derrida. That was the, 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 the year it uh, so, so opened, again, a completely different type of uh, approach. And I'm, again, I'm not going to uh, here to reconstruct the whole story of deconstruction, but it's um, uh, if I want to simplify, and that's in a way uh, the way, uh, the, in a way, the, the, the idea I'm trying to develop here, and it's a really an incredible naive idea, naive uh, idea, which is in the t title uh, about the minimum of morality. Uh, there is really a sort of uh, constant tension between um, uh, approach. Uh, uh, however dignified and uh, uh, in a better or not so convincing way, but it's uh, to, uh, the distrust about uh, against subjects uh, and the distrust against uh, speaking about any kind of moral, moral dimension was very much uh, on the order of the day, that is, uh, and uh, this paradoxical, it seemed to be a, a continuation of the paradox I already mentioned, the paradox we had in the, the sort of, so from kindergarten on, this idea about uh, uh, necessary sacrifices for an inevitable, and uh, you were supposed to uh, somehow um, ignore or, or, or uh, stop uh, any kind of mention of this, this, the uh, moral responsibility. But again, you were uh, more or less, if you had this kind of inclination, not really satisfied with the way the word was ticking. That's, there were all kinds of uh, uh, things you wanted changed and uh, the general idea of the context uh, I was uh, in, the, in both uh, in, with my colleagues or in the the series of ex experiments uh, introduced in the, the former Yugoslavia, as made it really uh, quite a daunting task. Well, minima moralia is uh, uh, it's appeared at first uh, uh, at first sight to be a kind of uh, solution and it's really a very seductive book because uh, and uh, in a way it's even popular not so much outside germany for obvious reasons of language and, and tradition but it's really 
it is supposed to be an example of uh, the generic critical theory approach that is that uh, 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 discouraging Olympic, Olympian distance and uh, seeing oneself as a part of the problem. But what it does is really uh, introducing um, not really, uh, uh, it's, uh, it doesn't teach uh, something, uh, it doesn't teach minimal morality as uh, that's not the, s the sense of the title, but it uh, is uh, obviously judgmental. And it's judgmental in a way that is certainly uh, to a certain justifying the uh, old uh, reproach against the Frankfurt School that it's uh, well uh, situated in the Hotel Abgrund, that is really enjoying its precarious position, looking into the abyss and the beam and something like that, but really enjoying the uh, uh, sort of uh, stance of being able to see to all that. That is, you are, the, the, and it, if you, uh, I suppose many of you have, it's an endless uh, joy really to go through these uh, sections of uh, really everything from details of everyday life to uh, more complicated matters because it just sort of exemplifies uh, this uh, not being taken uh, to be an idiot uh, in the uh, quotations from my start that I said you, there's the power and you are powerless, but still you have somehow managed to see how the uh, word really ticks. And so uh, it goes on and I don't know, we've spoken a lot about the specificity of the context, my historical and social context, and I'm not quite sure that we can do anything more about it, but uh, let us just uh, uh, conclude that uh, there was a certain effort to fight, to change, and uh, what uh, uh, I'm going to still I'm now concentrating on, on a on a concept, or a more, more a mood than a concept, that I think uh, is, uh, it, it took over in, uh, in some of the ways we now uh, perceive, or, or at least maybe I have to fight it, the concept of nostalgia. That uh, uh, if you are, of course, if you are speaking about alienations, uh, it is uh, or one of the possible uh, instances of this kind of, of fighting, this, this thing is that uh, the goal of restoring something lost. And then there are, of course, the utopian projects of various ambitions, uh, creating an environment without the mm, contaminations of the fallen word, the, the, the levels and the, the ways the, the whole history of civilization is more or less active in this kind of struggle to get uh, an, um, an, a take on the impersonal forces of uh, you somehow discern in the way things uh, are working and in, the, in your attempt to uh, find a, a sort of level, uh, level uh, to uh, uh, create a possibility of uh, interfering with it, of keeping the, the, well, it's a dumb word, but still I don't know any other right now, of agency. Uh, we, I mean, uh, we, we want uh, a proper Marxist, uh, by, uh, it, informed by Hegel approach, of course, uh, despises both nostalgia and utopianism. They are all both a type of uh, deviation. 
but I uh, I think that the whole effort of uh, fighting uh, or changing is always uh, somehow between these two possibilities of uh, utopia and nostalgia. And um, what I wanted here to, but I don't know if I want to consider it, I try to f f uh, somehow pinpoint how this, um, how, how it works out now. And uh, the idea, which is not very original, and I have here the necessary quotations, is uh, to see uh, how, uh, how it works now, that what moves us uh, in the sense of an ex emotional experience, and uh, what is, uh, what can uh, mobilize us and what can immobilize us, and uh, uh, this way it, uh, both nostalgia and utopia. I feel I, the topic here, which I'm not going to read because I'm much too tired, <laughs> and I'd rather discuss it with you, is uh, uh, that neither of these uh, endeavors are possible without one kind uh, of uh, what's called imagination. That again is a very simple word for, but I want to, uh, or it's not really an, 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 it's a sort of vague idea that um, what uh, uh, Apadura calls the social uses of imaginations is, is now uh, rather present in our, if we try to feel and see where what kind of uh, um, agency, uh, what kind of uh, conceptual framework we can uh, work out or, or spread or be convincing uh, in our uh, mobilization, it seems that uh, uh, the idea that uh, we have now uh, a perversion of imagination which doesn't work as an alternative but as a social praxis in, the scene, uh, in a way that uh, uh, we we do live in a world that is, uh, in the uh, sense of Max Weber, and Sauber, that is, uh, that is not, uh, it's a sort of uh, secularized and it doesn't, uh, uh, disenchanted is the English translation of it. Uh, and it's uh, obviously uh, a subject to, subject to functions and profits like that. But uh, uh, as, uh, Lesh speaks about consoling our state of alienation with consumption. I think that we have now uh, uh, come to a point where we uh, console our state uh, of alienation with uh, these social ways of using imagination. I know that the uh, project of the commercial proposal of Metaverse is, uh, I hope it's being a flop at least. And I hope <laughs> and that, but it doesn't. It doesn't really change uh, the, the prevailing uh, way of. Uh, of course, there are these kind of very simple solutions like cosplay and things like that. But the, the role playing variety of uh, uh, the social use of imagination of some, some, somehow not coming to or, or trying to. Uh, uh, I mean, until recently, uh, whatever the force of social change, we could make a, a, a case for social life being largely inertial. That is, there were sort of relatively finite set of possible lives, and that fantasy and imagination were sort of um, residual practices, special persons or domains, or restricted to special moments. But that now, uh, it's uh, the the fabrications. Uh, I mean, maybe it's not very much different from the I don't know uh, consumer uh, constructions of our identity, but it's uh, I think that it's more insidious. That it's uh, more prevailing. That is uh, the uh, I mean, how do you? Come, where do you sort of insert uh, uh, the idea of uh, 
keeping up with the with social struggle. Uh, of course, the and one possible cons conclusion of uh, reading uh, Minima Moralia is that we are already too damaged to uh, sort of uh, be able to deal with it. That's, uh, uh, but I really, that again is not a very new idea. But um, I can't really in, in, envisage any kind of uh, social struggle or even class struggle, if you use the proper words, without uh, a moral moment. The minimal morality of my title. Now, I know I'm just here uh, circling around and uh, in a simplified manner, uh, ma manner about this, this kind of uh, inner um, trouble. I'm carrying around with uh, uh, more or less, uh, not so much, of course, if you do what you do, then you uh, concentrate on, on, on an analysis and, and do what, uh, or try to find a, a conceptual framework and a, a kind of language to uh, deal with uh, specific problems. But um, if the topic is uh, alienation, and we have really, I'm, I'm, constantly uh, uh, trying to uh, give up on these uh, efforts and go back to some of the topics uh, already, uh, the question of happiness or even the question of that. Uh, uh, we, we could, of course, uh, here uh, was already mentioned the possibility of uh, uh, contrasting some ideas of uh, agency and that with, uh, uh, for instance, Deleuze's, uh, I have here a quotation again, I'm not one day. Uh, it's a very impressive kind, you know, you know the pure immanence uh, text, short immanence life. It's uh, about as a subjective consciousness, a pre-reflexive, uh, uh, Imminence. It's about a life contains only virtuals. It is made up of virtualities, events, singularities. What we call virtual is not something that lacks reality, but something that is engaged in the process of actualization following the pain that gives it particular reality. The imminent event is actualized in the state of things and of lifts that make it happen. Uh, you, I, I'm quite willing to uh, acknowledge that uh, living our lives is similar to this kind of uh, process of actualizations uh, and of, uh, but then uh, again, we, uh, if I come back to the crucial point, uh, I do cling to the notion of uh, change as a yardstick of uh, doing the right thing. And uh, if uh, uh, we may accept our damaged state uh, as an excuse, but then again, uh, only to a certain degree, because uh, uh, that's again an old notion. We are here, we are talking, we are assuming that we have an insight, we are uh, possibly or probably uh, uh, counting on an impact of our words, of our thesis. Uh, we have uh, discussed even some quite uh, specific topics about the given state of uh, our word, about the, the maybe inescapable uh, uh, damage, no, really not only personal, but in the uh, sense of um, climate change and and where to find, of course, in one sense, we have different proposals. We have proposals of uh, restoring uh, some type of uh, collective action uh, of some kind. Of, and we have proposals of opting out of, uh, or opting out in the sense of creating alternative uh, places of uh, 
a different type of communities. But again, in all these efforts, we are implying, even if we uh, don't want to have anything to do with this kind of simplified moral pressures. But actually, <laughs> that's all that I want. I have a more elegant way of uh, explaining all this, but I can't help clinging to a minimum of morality. That was a topic. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, Nadezhda. This is some sort of meditation. Beautiful. <laughs> really, like, really beautiful. Uh, so, um, questions? Uh, where's the assistant? Okay. Uh, can you just raise the hands, please, again? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, first Ross, and then Gregor. Okay. Uh, thanks very much. Um, I wanted to hear about the celebration of Stalin's death that you talk about. In the, but anyway, <laughs> okay. that, that, that's not really my question. No, that's the memoir type of thing. Right. Uh, it's really, it was, in, uh, as you know, in uh, 90, uh, 50, uh, 1953, and I was uh, six years old, yes, six years old. And that, that was the first time my sort of introduction in the, about the questions of death and politics and, and morality, because mm -hmm. uh, uh, we were, it's not part of the story, but uh, actually it was in Switzerland, where I was with my parents, and then uh, uh, one, one day, uh, it must be March, I don't really know, it's probably, uh, I think that the official uh, announcement of Stalin's death must, must have been the 5th of, not something like that, doesn't matter, and I'm not going to look it up. Uh, and then I, my father clinked, uh, heard him uh, running up the stairs and with the bottle of something and, and, and shouting, he's dead, he's dead. <laughs> and I was six years old and I was really surprised of such a reaction to death. <laughs> and uh, there I started to sort of, uh, uh, of course there were some explanations, uh, uh, some of them that even at six years I found it much too simple. Uh, uh, bad guys, I mean, if they die, it's nice that they die, but <laughs> They don't die usually. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> uh, but so so it started, and it's uh, I mean it, I put the, as in, uh, that that was the memoir version of my 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 paper. <laughs> the memoir version which started then uh, being first a firm believer in everything Yugoslav. You know, it was very simple. The simple idea: there's the West, capitalist, very bad; the East, Stalinist, very bad. Here we had the right thing, and it's really it's a, the 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 uh, of course you had to have some kind of privileged background to uh, keep uh, on believing something like that. You know, it's, it wasn't quite obvious because the the uh, inequality was present and the different types of uh, privileges and the whole real socialist. Of course, it was uh, it was different from other types, but and, and then you you sort of start reading and start reading, and then you compare um, the the way it works here. Uh, actually, I I ran away in '68 in the direction of the West because it seemed that they they have kept on with revolutions, in, you know, going west '68 students, revolts, all kinds of things. And then I had a very, uh, I never forget, my first student meeting with German students of the leftist kind, because I tried to find this kind of people there. And they were, I was taken to task because I didn't see the, uh, re, uh, the, 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 the Soviet invasion in Czechoslovakia was the right thing to do. <laughs> but literally so. <laughs> and the, the sort of discrepancy between some kind of uh, uh, experience I had here and the, the way it was in a purely, uh, it's the, the, as we all, you maybe not, you don't you know it uh, from different kinds of things. 
the way a, a lot of these alternative and uh, some of them very fascinating uh, movements uh, of change uh, works is that they they really are in a bubble. There is sort of you you create an alternative reality where, where all kinds of things happen. I I didn't uh, I didn't make an an uh, catalog of all possibilities uh, of doing theory in the 60s uh, uh, started here. And some of them are really going on. Uh, uh, again, in Germany, I first encountered uh, uh, very strenuous uh, efforts to keep up in declaring the Maoist conceptions of being the proper thing. You know, and a lot of uh, very, very sophisticated uh, conceptual work goes into uh, explaining some kind of uh, I now think contrafactual ideas, and I, and I have. And again, I told you, I'm going. To, if you let me, I'm going to the memoirs section. I was rather admiring uh, the admirer of uh, the work of uh, Julia Kristeva until I read uh, uh, in the, the, the book about the Chinese uh, Chinese women a description of the wonderful. Uh, effect of a, of a group of Chinese pioneers marching at the, what's it called, a sort of meeting and things like that. And I would even uh, accept something like that from someone coming from Paris. But Julia Christina was Bulgarian. She had seen this kind, the type of pioneers back in Sofia. So this, uh, uh, this, this kind of, uh, reading something into uh, the same kind of uh, event, you know, children with, uh, with uh, red scarves marching around as a sort of uh, epiphany of a future world. No, I sort of, as I told you, I'm tired and so a little, little, little bit, that, but it, again, it's not a, a, the, the impact of, uh, as you, it's a well-known fact. The Frankfurt people are both inspired all kinds of uh, very uh, important changes in the German context, and even further, and uh, they did uh, uh, provoke a type of uh, 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 better insight into how the uh, how the how to interpret some of the things around you, uh, but that again, um, they were sort of discarded. Uh, inevitably, they were they were the self sufficiency of some of the members of this uh, this school didn't uh, last very long as a type of insp inspiration. But then again, it's uh, all, all kinds of things. Then uh, I went back to Yugoslavia and uh, uh, more or less participated, uh, not that I'm, I'm not going to sort of construct myself a sort of uh, heroic, which it really doesn't, but uh, we did go to a number of efforts to uh, keep up or to find a, a, a language to do something. And again, again, I'm going to simplify, because uh, it was quite uh, easy. I know that it's much too simple to, to say that the, the moral dimension is as, uh, rightly criticized both in the proper Marxist way and in the way here, uh, here people much better um, uh, able to explain the psychoanalytical uh, view of it. I'm not going to go into that, but it's, again, uh, not, uh, uh, not a position, not a, a type of analysis that uh, enables one to uh, keep up this naive stance of uh, a minimum of morality. But, yeah, sorry, I want passions if there are some passions. I'm sorry. Uh, thank that, that was sort of my 
question, but that was that was the kind of question from information. Could I just quickly? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't want to yeah, bog okay. this microphone. Let's hear the question. Uh, my, the question that I really wanted to ask was about nostalgia and uh -huh. the structure of nostalgia, in particular in Adorno. And I was very I was very interested in what you said about it. Mm -hmm. um, but I was I was thinking about the nostalgic framing of minima moralia and also of negative dialectics, which I know <laughs> you yeah. know very well. So in particular, it's um, it, minima moralia, um, he begins by saying that philosophers used to teach the good life and now they don't because the conditions for living a good life have gone. Yes. And of course, the title is, is a riff on Aristotle, the pseudo-Aristotelian text and so on. And so you think, really, the conditions for living a good life really existed in ancient Athens with slavery and the subjugation of women and imperialism and all the rest of it. Of course they didn't. Of course they didn't. And then li likewise, at the beginning of um, negative dialectics, philosophy is still necessary because the moment for its realization was missed. It's missed, yes. Mm -hmm. so, it's a nostalgia for the future, isn't it, in, in Adorno? It's a nostalgia for what, was ne what has never been, which is why that apothem of um, Karl Krauss's, the origin is the goal, is so yes. important to him. And if you name it, then it may disappear. There's a sort of, uh, it's for the future, but it, if you uh, make it a program or uh, sort of uh, instrumentalize it in a positive way, you will miss it. That's the, 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 the you are uh, you are you are feeling the the the, the, the appeal or, or 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 you're trying to project or you, you but you, you you never there's really a a, a sort of uh, you are forbidden to name the future. It's it's you are not allowed to 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 pin it down because once you pin it down you are already. Uh, in the realm of the instrumentalized uh, 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 the, the, you are turning it in, into a, a different. Yeah, I mean, it's. I, I still feel it. That I <laughs> spent some time right now. I still feel it. Uh, the seduction. Well, obviously, the first sentence of the negative dialectics about uh, that's that's uh, easier to see. That that's something we keep up because, of course, obviously the moment of uh, possible, uh, if we say that, the, I don't know, in, in 1917 or, or with the possible uh, uh, global reach of revolutions, there was a moment when you could maybe expect something to happen. And then again, uh, uh, well, I don't have an example, so, but uh, you, um, it's you keep on doing it because it's the only way that you at least that's of course not uh, not uh, Adorno but Benjamin you do it uh, for those who suffered to redeem the past you, know? you keep it uh, you keep it alive by uh, circling about it Yes, but um, now it's 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 like in the direct directions of enlightenment. There's always there's a you 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 name it and then you sort of um, question it and then you go back mm -hmm. again. I mean, it's, it's I don't really know. Maybe it's the only way that we can uh, think outside of. Uh, Simplifying or uh, or uh, reductive, uh, you know, role playing uh, mm, sort of uh, uh, false false way of dealing with things. Yeah. Can I continue? Yes. No, there's a, mm -hmm. I'm very sympathetic to what. Uh, Ross was uh, addressing, and I'm basically going to just continue um, mm -hmm. his line of questions. Um, even though, for me, when you know, you even 
began your talk. Maybe this will be just a collection of memoirs. Um, and perhaps maybe this is all you wanted to do, but I do sense like, you know, you also shrewdly and strategically, you know, placed certain words in your talk, like uh, Derrida, uh, like between nostalgia and utopia. Clearly, I think, well, but maybe I'm reading it into it, but clearly I think you were referring to the specters of Marx uh, and to the whole idea that perhaps, you know, the whole Marxist project, whatever it was, maybe it was never but a specter. Uh, maybe it was never but, you know, an idea of a future that we have now completely forgotten and, uh, you know, are still kind of struggling to what to do with this this yes. idea of future I, and i just sorry to mm -hmm. interrupt you but i just wanted my reference uh, to nostalgia wasn't um, adorno but rather mark fisher who speaks you know from specifically british context but nevertheless uh, evokes the question and he even gives nostalgia even some sort of positive <laughs> twist to an extent of course only but still like i mean some you know, senses of social uh, social welfare state. I mean, is it so bad <laughs> to feel nostalgic about that? Uh, that's kind of uh, Mark Fisher's point, and it's, you know, valid. But I suppose, like, the more, the more philosophical, the more, you know, Derridian question would be precisely the idea of what are we really nostalgic about. So in, in, in this line, I'm basically just repeating uh, Ross's question, namely, you know, what is... Um, would you basically agree with this, yeah. that it's you yes, know, the future agree. that I mean, yeah. perhaps never existed, even, uh, you know, in, yeah. in quasi-existing uh, socialisms, but One nevertheless is, yeah. it was at least mm -hmm. attempted to? There are two points. One is about what we feel uh, nostalgic about, that is, uh, we, we ache because we love something, uh, our past, our dreams, or something like that. The other point is um, the effect or the impact of nostalgia. I think that nostalgia does uh, function somehow like a sort of curtain, you know. You, uh, you, uh, nostalgia is uh, like, you know, when you um, shed tears in the movies, things like that, you know, it isolates you from seeing the phenomena. You, you sort of, uh, a curtain uh, which is uh, pleasurable or less pleasurable, it, it depends on things, but it's, uh, it's, um, it's still a mood. It's not. Uh, it's not something that makes you that moves you. It it does uh, move you in the sims uh, in the sense of uh, uh, creating a move uh, in the other sense of uh, creating an emotion, but uh, it's a sort of exp uh, uh, experience. But then, uh, does it? Uh, can it uh, involve a sort of? motion without the an E, an upheaval type of thing, you know. Uh, so uh, I, the, I have a certain, I do feel, uh, of course, I feel, as you say, uh, there were things I uh, would defend, uh, I still do defend, of course, that the, 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 even if in my uh, uh, rather naive uh, uh, enjoyment of this specialty of being in between, finding the the philosopher's stone of how to live the, the Yugoslav project. That was, I, I don't know how, how many people sh shared this idea. Uh, maybe the, there were some special circumstances, uh, use and uh, privilege to make me feel like that. But um, I, I, I think that it, it, to, to, to enjoy this kind of uh, nostalgic moments is a temptation. But I don't think that it uh, 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 contributes to knowledge. <laughs> and it's still what we do. We try to, uh, even in the sense uh, I quoted, you know, you, you don't, uh, nostalgia is uh, powerless. It's a passive kind of thing. Utopia isn't, is, uh, utopia might be a sort of plan of actions, but it's still, uh, not grounded in a, in a, 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 
in a way that you can uh, formulate the conditions of uh, acting in a certain way uh, to get to a certain goal with some people, with the social forces uh, you may mobilize. So it's... I. Of course, uh, it, you, 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 are, you sort of um, found me out. <laughs> I'm trying to say something and not to say it. <laughs> sort, of <laughs> sort of say it <laughs> and withdraw it. But of course, if you speak, you can do it. Uh, if you write, I could have. I said I had a certain temptation just to go and sort of, you know, march through the sentences and then <laughs> just let it there. And then I thought it's really late, and and uh, I'm uh, I'm a talkative person, as you mentioned, if you realize these days. <laughs> no, but there are serious issues. There are really serious issues, and uh, I'm um, now with the uh, whenever I, I and I'm really glad uh, with the uh, interest. Uh, uh, of course, there's the general idea and the vice vice reaching idea of about uh, alienation in different types. Uh, uh, and then there was a special uh, special issue of uh, the contextual here and, and of the past of Yugoslavia. And uh, I do find it is a proper uh, topic of research, but uh, it's, I don't know, maybe I, uh, you should I should be more disciplined uh, because you no. Know, if you uh, have the topic about the whole network of uh, Marxist centers in the broad variety of different approaches, then uh, uh, the I know that uh, if I would uh, uh, encounter something less uh, emotionally. Uh, colored uh, by the past, I of course I would regard it in a more neutral way, like an interesting topic of uh, in an interesting field. But uh, it's very difficult for me to uh, deal with any kind of this uh, in research into the past. Uh, uh, so uh, really. Uh, buried and forgotten uh, uh, without uh, some kind of... Uh, I can't really uh, attain any kind of objectivity. Partly because I uh, had a different type of experience, partly <coughs> because the persons that appear here as uh, authors of um, papers or books or so are still vividly present in the flesh <laughs> for me. <laughs> And not always <coughs> in a uh, protective way. I even met Kadir, you know. Oh. <laughs> Can we pose uh, another question? Okay, of course. <laughs> Um, yes, hi. Uh, sorry, I, I just wanted to uh, thank Gregor for uh, bringing up Fisher because before I could get my hands on him. Um, but uh, absolutely, I think uh, what you said about the emptiness of nostalgia right there, you know, mm -hmm. the, there's the saying of uh, you can go to the past, but there's no one, no one there. Uh, and uh, uh, I was just kind of circling that around in my head because I think generationally uh, the notion of Yugoslavia, the concept of Yugoslavia, uh, life there and the, 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 the promise of a, uh, of a project, real, uh, you know, really existing socialism, a third way, etc., um, has sort of uh, lived beyond very much its uh, sort of formal historical finish. Uh, you know, within later generations, you get uh, various degrees of uh, fetishizing the aesthetics of Yugoslavia, but also a genuine kind of uh, sense of uh, uh, ontology and, and a lost future where uh, you kind of found yourself in the ruins of this uh, uh, great project uh, that, that, that seems so promising and now you're in a sort of... Uh, yeah, of course, I mean, I, I, if I would uh, supervise a research, uh, I would try to um, 
emphasize the ties the outside Yugoslavia because uh, even if you see how the praxis functioned and, and the cultural uh, summer school functioned, there are all kinds of uh, um, French or German uh, initiatives or uh, uh, sort of uh, at least somehow related types of uh, dealing with uh, with Marx. And then, of course, what uh, one of the things that the, the old types of uh, Yugoslav uh, uh, professors or researchers, or whatever, it is uh, trying to construct an uh, alternative uh, uh, history of Marxism. You know, uh, I don't know, digging up uh, uh, Zone Rätel or different types of forget forgotten course or whatever. I mean, they, they did the proper work. They tried to, and the whole uh, uh, tradition of uh, anarcho-syndicalism, you know, they they did try to find the uh, uh, that I think that if you want to do uh, a relevant work of the uh, impact and uh, the achievements of Yugoslav theory here, you should do it in the in the whole network of Mark, uh, thinking about Marx and Marx and those uh, they they are, it's 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 uh, if you do it in isolations you will run into uh, some kind of uh, well, it's, it's of course not 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 uh, uh, it has its interest, but the, the, one of the um, even the official, not only uh, the more uh, like praxis t uh, type of people, but even at the official meetings of uh, the type of party organized conferences, uh, tried always to go a little bit further, uh, dig out someone else. You know, in a way, it's of course funny if you see how um, uh, it goes so far that uh, we had this uh, strange combination of Heidegger Marxism. <laughs> I mean, in itself, it's, uh, if, you, if you try to uh, uh, cast a, a distant look at different types of uh, Philosophical traditions, and then you suddenly uh, uh, see people who are who speak a language of uh, uh, really uh, all kinds of uh, um, entities like uh, uh, the, the proper humanism and and the self-realization and the the thinking of revolution and things like that, who are still trying or a sort of smuggling or, or relating or suddenly developing a Heideggerian kind of thing that it is strange, but it, it was part of this kind of uh, trying to find, no, I don't think Ali, an Ali in Heidegger, that would be really too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I just have a, a, a short specific question, uh, uh, which was uh, perhaps sl slightly provocative, but to what extent do you view what is now sort of popularly referred to as Yuga nostalgia uh, and the sort of modern view that, of Yugoslavia that per predominates both amongst sort of the older generations and the youth as a kind of uh, trauma dream? Uh, I suppose, precipitated by the 80s and 90s. I think most of Yugo nostalgia is a sort of role playing. <laughs> Thank you. I really think it's a part of those those social practice of imaginations. No, I, I don't. I don't want to be. Uh, no, uh, of course, if you don't, uh, uh, there's so much not to like in the uh, uh, successor states of former Yugoslavia. That the, uh, and then there are some all, all kinds of things, but. Uh, you know, there, there is even a sort of it's a, it's a product. It's a, you even and it's partly even constructed out of products. They uh, speak about Yugo nostalgia uh, in connections with a special brand of uh, cookies, yes. chocolates, and, and things like that. I mean, <laughs> of course, I, I don't mind it. I, I mean, I, some of them I remember, some of them I don't, don't remember. But it's really. Uh, it's not a, a very interesting level, you know. It's <laughs> Ray? Uh, thank you for very suggestive uh, stories and memories. I, I like to come back to the question, uh, one word in Adorno's book, uh, uh, Minima Moralia, the, the word damaged, a damaged life. 
right? Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm curious how you link the notion of damage to the theme of our conscience, alienation. The reason I ask is because, as we know, Adorno has a pretty um, pessimistic reading of the European Enlightenment, right, in the dialectics of yeah. Enlightenment. So, uh, to sum it up in a very crude way, the Enlightenment led all the way up to the Holocaust, right? So, so I always understand his notion of a damaged life in relation to the fact that he was Jewish and so on and so forth. Now, but uh, for our conference, I feel that there is a sort of uh, invitation, uh, maybe by Maladen, uh, who wrote the introduction, right, to, to rethink the whole idea of alienation. In other words, the invitation is for us to maybe not think about alienation in such pessimistic terms or as such a bad thing. And remember, the Slovenian school is always teaching us to about enjoyment, right? So the, the big word is actually enjoyment rather than alienation. So I, 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 I think that Adorno is... Yeah, but he's suspected to enjoy his pessimism. <laughs> yes, I think that the Slovenians <laughs> no, uh, uh, would uh, say that. Yeah, of course. I know. I quite our, agree. It's true. Uh, I quite agree. Uh, but yeah. uh, to to go back to this uh, question of directive of enlightenment, uh, it is a, it is a serious analysis because it's it's really uh, the thesis is that the rationality uh, developed in the subjection of uh, nature has damaged us in the in the struggle for survival dealing with nation uh, with nature as an object and and the other we had to uh, introduce uh, he speaks about all kinds of things that it's all sometimes it's metaphorical like coldness and sometimes it's something else but the, the, it's that but of course maybe jewish but, I, but it, it is in a, in a in a certain uh, way the uh, old idea of uh, a fallen nature, you know, and of course, the, in the in the Christian Christian tradition, as opposed to the Jewish, there is something called the Felix culpa. So the the initial uh, sin <laughs> doesn't have always only one type of uh, consequences, you know. Uh, in Adorno, it you know. But then he always smuggles some some kind of thing, you know. Uh, he says uh, almost ins I I insoluble task, yeah. not insoluble. <laughs> it's almost insoluble. <laughs> it's almost there. We m might have, but uh, the qu question of the subjection of nature, you can delete it. You don't have to have the 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 the, the uh, apparatus of uh, Adorno and Horkheimer. We are hearing all kinds of. Everyone is nowadays uh, because of the, the 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 ecological dimension speaking about that. But mm -hmm. is inevitable. Is the damage uh, is the damage to our planet uh, 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 only restricted to uh, the newest development, uh, fossil fuel? Can we or is it? Uh, I mean, the evidence uh, there are pre-industrialized. Uh, People who used to, who were quite good at damaging the planet <laughs> or, or destroying things like that. Is it really so that? Uh, and then, of course, there is a variety. Is the subjection or the the, the biblical uh, right given to uh, uh, humankind to subject nature and be the master of whatever there is to master? Is that uh, the only possible tradition of mankind? Are they? alternative ways of uh, going back, but then as we have seen, it's uh, it's a bit late to go back. No? We discussed that much yeah. better than I can do it now with the degrowth uh, issue thing. Okay. Is it acceptable or not? Yeah, okay. Uh, Laurent, huh? did you, yeah? yeah. Okay. Um, it's, it's, a, yeah it's a really stupid question. Uh, but thank you very much uh, for uh, bringing forth in the conference this dimension that was not present, uh, I believe, which is the, the, 
the whole psychic atmosphere or psychic climate that, that surrounds the discussions about not only alienations but all the issues that have been uh, uh, discussed during the conference. Um, you, uh, here, during the questioning, of course, one of these atmosphere, one of those atmospheres has been already discussed at length, which is precisely the one of nostalgia. But in your presentation, there is another word uh, that has occurred twice. You have said it twice, and that strikes me as, a, and, and on which I, I would like you to elaborate. But perhaps there is nothing to elaborate about that. That's that's why my question is perhaps totally stupid. And this word is seduction. So you have mentioned twice that. Uh, reading Adorno for you was something that has something to do with seduction. So you were rereading him because you were still seduced and so on and so forth. And, 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 <laughs> well, and for yes, of course, I'm trying so hard to uh, uh, avoid the, <laughs> the seduction issue. <laughs> the whole, <laughs> the whole things it comes with, of course, I'm never, I can't. And of course, uh, you know, everyone knows that uh, the uh, Adorno's the, infamous sentence about uh, he thinks that uh, psychoanalysis is true only when it, in the its exaggerations. It, it's a sort of general idea that he doesn't really deal with psychoanalysis, but he thinks that some of the extreme the, 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 the exaggerations might be Accept them. <laughs> no, uh, uh, of course, I'm, 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 I'm not using the, this kind of uh, usual, uh, but of course it, it's, uh, it's appropriate. I have to acknowledge it. I don't deal with it because I, I'm, I'm, it's, uh, I'm not very good in, the, as we heard in a brilliant way, uh, dif uh, different uh, talks uh, here. Uh, I, um, have maybe sort of inhibition or, 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 or sort of clinging loyalty to my Frankfurt uh, formation. Uh, I can't really, I'm very um, cautious about uh, using uh, even remotely psychoanalytic uh, terms to the interpretations of a whole process. Maybe I should do, but I don't. <laughs> I was just thinking that because uh, I was uh, wondering whether seduction was what was what wasn't the thing that would bridge uh, precisely uh, this question of, of alienation with the one of enjoyment. Yeah. That's why. I asked yeah, but the but I'm really interested. You know, uh, uh, there are different uh, types of. Uh, uh, you all know it's a long story about agency and subject, which is a sort of hidden thread in the paper. Uh, one is about the old uh, old chestnut about who is going to educate the educators. That's one possibility. The other is, of course, the George Lukacs type of thing that uh, the proletariat can't really do it themselves. They have to have the party to do it from them. But, uh, sorry, it's really simplified. But that's what it says that in in, in uh, 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 and, and then there are all types of things that are uh, are. Uh, the moving also says it that, uh, but if you are never allowed to uh, have a, I see it sounds naive, to have straightforward motives in wanting something or introducing some change, but if, if there's always something you, uh, I'm quite willing to uh, acknowledge that it's like that, but I'm uh, again quite willing to uh, accept a self-misunderstanding. If a self-misunderstanding makes me function in order to change something, <laughs> so I'm going to be self-misunderstood. <laughs> Perfect. Um, if there's no more urgent questions, I will no, use the, uh, like the privilege that I'm uh, the moderator. Uh, I will also uh, give a comment or like just short, uh, also personal experience and thought. Um, yeah, um, I was also thinking of Yugo Nostalgia, even when I was preparing you, uh, my talk, when I read your Stalin uh, memoir in your abstract, um, uh, and you said for you, Yugo Nostalgia was something uh, artificial or performance or something like this, you, you commented on this, but I was thinking of... Um, 
of okay first thing is that my first political experience is Tito's death mm -hmm. which is completely different experience and actually if I'm like very honest I I watched uh, the video a couple of times and I cried people are crying and I cried I couldn't help myself but I know you know sort of you know I know I know but I still I, I cried um, and I, I I was thinking of this so um, before I was speaking about this ego ideal. So our generation is the generation of the last pioneers. So uh, we gave this oath um, that we will be good comrades, that we will build a new life of joy and happiness and uh, that we will never break the oath. And I thought, what is, this? I was thinking about the difference between your generation and our generation. And I think the difference, so I will, uh, I will suggest my, <laughs> my thoughts. No. I think the difference from my perspective is that um, we didn't have um, opportunity of a disillusionment. So if one is raised in one um, ideology, uh, like you were, like you knew at the beginning that West is bad, East is bad, here is good, but slowly you disillusioned yourself through growing up. For us, it was like we were like enchanted with yeah. this oat, and then we didn't have opportunity of dis disillusionment, but we <laughs> we were yeah, taken away this thing yeah. from the outside, like given another thing. And I thought that maybe you gonna nostalgia comes from. From this, no, uh, you know, I'm, uh, no it's, I, must, yeah. I must say something. I, I spent uh, a few years of my life uh, in efforts, political efforts, to keep uh, to uh, save Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't very prominent. There was uh, one of the first uh, non-official movements. Uh, we tried. We s thought that was, there was a bit of opportunity uh, to keep the thing together. No, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's it was called UD, UUD, <laughs> the Union for uh, Dif Democratic something in Yugoslavia, and it, it that wasn't the nostalgic thing. It was it had no nothing to do with, uh, and we really tried uh, hard not to include this kind of identifications with uh, your old or something like <laughs> that. We thought it that it there's a possibility, and that is uh, that it was a viable political idea to keep the thing together. And I, th I did that in not by any kind of, uh, it's, uh, and uh, maybe it was too late, maybe it, it had never any kind of chance. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we had some kind of, uh, uh, it's different to, uh, difficult to explain. Uh, we had uh, an other type of illusions. Uh, we had, uh, we had uh, the idea that uh, there's, uh, the, with the, the inside the so called what we call the civil society, there are some forces uh, able to transcend uh, the ethnic uh, conflicts. We tried, we thought that maybe there's a possibility, like, uh, well, it's not quite an analogy, that like in Spain, that is, there's a possibility of, uh, of imposing a sort of democratization from the center and, uh, well, in, in Spain. Pain, it's still not clear if it's going to fall apart or not. But that's, that has nothing to do very much, but I'm, I'm not going to now explain and, and think. But it was a, a political effort uh, that uh, uh, failed. It was the, one of the last opportunities where people from all over the former Yugoslavia were connected with this kind of thing, with Uiti, and we, we tried it and it was Either it was never going to work, or it was too late. And it was, um, well, that's one of the things I can't really be quite objective about, because that was, uh, as always, with, with uh, a number of dedicated persons in, in uh, engaged in a sort of effort, it was, uh, well, it failed. So. <laughs> Uh, the first uh, meeting started in uh, nine, uh, 89 and then we kept on and kept on. Even 
Uh, there was, we had some, uh, we didn't want to go uh, when the first elections, so called free elections started, uh, we started. Uh, we did, maybe it's, uh, I never was one of the more important members of it, and uh, a number of them are already um, dead or doing different kinds of things, but it's. Here in the, in the, from the people from uh, Ljubljana, uh, Rasko was active in mm -hmm. Ljubljana. Rasko Bocnik, so that you see the type of persons we try to do. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Nadezhda. It's yeah, just yeah. so inspiring.